I think the Quezon City is in fact one of the most gay-friendly cities in Asia. In 2014, we did a summit to uh, try to find out if there was really a need for us to propose legislation in aid of this particular sector. And that's when we were kind of surprised because there were a lot of issues that were raised uh, during the summit, among them LGBT individuals not having restroom to more alarming issues like young girls and boys being beaten up by their parents, um, experiencing rejection, being bullied in schools. And so we decided that it was time to come up with some kind of legislation. It's called the Gender Fair Ordinance. We have in that ordinance a provision for the creation of a Pride Council. So this is a council that creates policy in favor of the LGBTQA plus sector. For example, here in Quezon City, we celebrate Pride. We have a commitment ceremony every year. We have trainings for our village leaders as to how they can create safe spaces within their respective villages. We are now considered the safest space for LGBTQIA plus people in the whole country because of that. And now we're mounting this Pride March. And I asked my partner, uh, NGO, which is Pride Philippines, how we were doing in terms of sponsorship. And they said they had had to turn down sponsors because there's just so many that wanted to support this advocacy. But at, at the end of the day, the policy is not there. Despite the fact that we have drag uh, race Philippines, we have transgender beauty queens, people are coming out left and right. The absence of policy still puts them in a very precarious and dangerous situation. The state is supposed to support human rights. And that's why I don't understand why a simple anti-discrimination bill does not get passed in Congress because it is not inconsistent with the Constitution at all. Of course, for me, an inclusive country will also improve tourism revenue because everybody wants to come to a country that they feel safe in, right? So there are a lot of economic benefits to anti-discrimination policies and that's why I am suggesting to my colleagues who are fighting for the social equality bill to be passed in Congress that maybe you should argue from the perspective of economics because there are already data that shows GDPs for countries that are inclusive vis-a-vis -vis those that are not and maybe that can be used to change the minds of our lawmakers. I think at the end of the day when there's all of this noise coming in acceptance here, respect here, marches here, rallies there. I think Congress will be convinced. That's my ultimate dream, that Congress will just say, okay, let's just do it. You know?